Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. It is winter farm show season, which means it is time for the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. So I'm going to start this video out. I got down here the week before to unload some tractors, start setting up the show and whatnot, and then I went back home for the weekend. This video is going to be a little different because I'm actually hitting two farm shows in the same week. With that said, I will not be in Louisville, Kentucky for the final setup of the show just the days before because I am flying out to Tulare, California to attend the World Egg Expo. Now, generally, the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky and the World Egg Expo in Tulare run on the same week every year. The Louisville Show or National Farm Machinery Show is usually a Wednesday through Saturday show and the World Egg Expo is generally a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday show. I have never been to the World Egg Expo in Tulare, California. I hear it's a pretty neat show, so I am looking forward to that. Anyways, let's see what's going on around the show here while I'm waiting on tractors to show up so I can unload them. I have attended every National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky since 1995, including setup and working the show. Of course, 1995 to 2009 was with Gale Company. From 2010 up to 2022, was with Versatile, and now for 2023, I am working for Deutz Farr or PFG Power Farming Group, who is the Deutz Farr distributor for the United States. PFG or Power Farming Group world headquarters are out of New Zealand. Over in New Zealand, they are the Deutz Farr Coyote Versatile distributor for New Zealand and Australia. They also carry many other lines over there, and as of five years ago, they're now the Deutz Farr distributor here in the United States with their U.S. headquarters based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I am just waiting on a few more tractors to show up here, so as I'm walking around seeing what's going on, just getting some footage of some different things coming in and out of the show. As I've talked about before, it's always good to get here early, get this big stuff moved in the week before the show so you're not fighting everyone else. Now, our carpet should be laid down here pretty quick, and there you go. They're putting our carpet down. We're right beside the door, so we got a pretty good spot for getting in and out of the show. And like I said, just waiting on a couple more tractors to show up here, and we should be ready to go. Here comes a good looking grain cart. There's actually a guy on YouTube that has several videos of a black chain and grain cart, very similar to that. Here's a pretty good guy. I think it goes by Farmhand Mike or something. Anyways, here we are. It is Friday morning. The rest of the tractors are here. So we're gonna get backed up to the dock, get these things unloaded, run them over to the staging area, let them get cleaned up, and then run them inside, put them on display for next week's show. Model 7250 is a new model we're handling here in the U.S. This should be a big seller, 250 engine horsepower. Looking forward to having this tractor in the lineup. In all the years setting up this show, this is a first. I've never drove a tractor right through the front gates. This 7250 that I am in here driving has the TTV transmission. If you want to see a video on how that transmission operates, I just did an instructional video on that a month ago. I'll put the link to it at the end of this one. A couple guys I know to help me drive tractors in. This guy right here had a big old Bluetooth set on, so I knew he was qualified to drive a tractor. Looks like all the tractors are here now. I got them all lined up, so we'll get the wash crew over here to wash them. We can start running stuff inside once the carpet's done. And the carpet is done, but somebody's driving a combine across it. They didn't put the plastic down yet. 
and it looks like they are crinkling it a little bit. I have a sign to put together yet. Once I get that sign put together, the crew will come over. They're going to hang this sign up, and then I can go home for the weekend. Next stop will be sunny California. I got the frame all put together. Now I just have to put the wrap around it and then I can go home for the weekend, get ready for California. And on Monday morning, February 13th, 2023, I drove down to the Cincinnati airport, which did you know the Cincinnati airport is actually in Kentucky? Anyways, I had a direct flight from there to Los Angeles or LAX. That is about three hours from where the show is in Tulare, but I was meeting some co-workers there. One of the owners from New Zealand was flying over there. I was meeting him, meeting his son, who does live in the United States, and the sales manager out of Georgia. And then we made the drive up to the farm show in Tulare Monday night to attend the show on Tuesday. It's been a long time since I've been in and out of the LAX airport. I'm going to guess 2005 to 2007, somewhere in there. We made the drive up to Tulare. Our first stop, we stopped at the Crone dealership, who is also a Deutz Far dealer in Tulare. Visited with those guys, so we're just going to have a look around at some of the Crone equipment they had on their lot. And as you can see, it is nice and sunny here. I want to say the temperature here was around 60, 65 degrees, so it was a pretty nice day. Now, a lot of their new equipment was out at the show, which I'm going to show you later on in the video. Tuesday morning, February 14th, here we are for day number one of the World Egg Expo. Not only is it the first day of the show, it's also Valentine's Day. And I get to spend it with my love for farm equipment. Okay, so here I am at the show. I'm going to be hanging out at the Deutz Far booth. Let's take a look around. First up, we got this new Deutz Far 8280 tractor in the Warrior package with the optional matte green color. I kind of like this color. And with California being a pretty big farming state for fruit trees, nuts, vineyard stuff like that, you're going to see a lot of the Deutz Far Orchard Vineyard tractors on display at this show. We also had some Crone equipment on display on our lot hooked to our tractors. Now Crone does have a separate display here and they got some Deutz Far tractors over there. I'll show some video of that later on. And at the time, I did not realize my camera was in fast forward, but I'm sure I was saying something pretty important here. As performed by Isabella Casso. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming
was just pretty awesome. Agriculture out here in the Central Valley of California is pretty diverse. There is a lot of specialty farming stuff like that. And you're going to see a lot of equipment in this video that we normally don't get to see in the Midwest. But I mean to tell you, I've seen a lot of offset discs. Just a lot of neat equipment here that I'm going to share with you in the next 20 or 30 minutes of this video. I should be coming out to this area several times a year, so I'm looking forward to getting some different content for my YouTube channel out here as these guys are farming in the Central Valley of California. There was a couple ride and drives at this show. I don't think there was any field demos like we see at the Farm Progress. But anyways, like I said, with all the different equipment here, it was a lot to take in in one day. So this is a Z440. Yeah, Oz is what it actually is called. Oh, no, it's Oz 440, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, so I mean, basically you can attach those in the back. It'll see, it'll ramp, it'll that type of stuff. Okay. One of these machines is definitely on my video wish list. Now, if I was going to take a wild guess, I would say they use this machine here for harvesting raisins. I could be wrong. And throughout this video, you're going to see a lot of equipment like this, a lot of orchard equipment. I understand a lot of this equipment is used to harvest pistachios, almonds, and stuff like that. Later on in the video, I did walk through another company here, and they explained some of the stuff and how it works. And these machines right here, used for pruning trees or they'd be pretty handy for putting up my Christmas lights also. Freeman balers or Freeman hay equipment is something we just don't really see in the East or the Midwest. Most of the ones I see when I see these are out in Arizona, California, up the West Coast, whatnot. But these are actually manufactured in Oregon. They look a lot like a square baler we know is like the John Deere New Holland, except look at this. These have three twines on them, so there's three knotters on this baler. A lot of these Freeman balers I see have their own motor on them so they can pull these with a pickup truck, a Jeep, something like that. Now they do have a PTO drive. They also have a self-propelled square baler. They didn't have one here at the show but I think there was a banner of one. Anyways, we're just going to walk around their display here, check these things out. When I was talking to one of the guys here about these balers, he said that the ones with the motor on them are pretty common. A lot of guys like to pull these with trucks to reduce their road travel when their fields are spaced out, cuts down on their travel time. But as you can see, there is one here with a power takeoff on it. And they did not have one of these here on display, but here's a banner showing that they do make a self-propelled small square baler as well. And here's something definitely we do not get to see in the Midwest. I understand this equipment here is used for almonds and pistachio harvest. How does it work? Let's find out. So this is the shaker and then you drive up and then that moves up around the, the trunk of the tree yeah. and then uh, squeeze it. Uh, okay. Shake it. Uh huh. You can set the amount of seconds if you want. Okay. Force it up. Yeah. Shake. And then everything will fall on that table and then go over to the... Did you catch that? So this machine right here will drive down one side of the trees. Then we'll walk over to the other side where that table will be on the other side of the tree with the conveyor. They'll butt up against each other once they shake the tree. All the nuts will fall down on this conveyor here and then they convey those back into the next machine I'm going to show you. And it is my understanding then they can convey these either into bins and fill the almonds or the pistachios into bins or they can run one of these other tubs here where they can actually go over to a big conveyor and load a truck with them. It's my understanding like this machine right here can follow behind the shaker or the conveyors here and carry those, convey them back. They can either fill a bin or like I said, a conveyor to go fill a large truck. I think I'm right on this. I might not have it down 100%, but anyways, I do hope to get out here and see this in season next summer when this is all going on for a better explanation how all this works. Anyways, it's all new to me, so it's pretty fascinating and just pretty cool to share here on my YouTube channel. And then this machine here, if you are filling them in bins, this will come through the rows of trees and pick up the bins. And they can take them out to wherever they're going to move them around, haul them away, whatnot. There was just a lot of this type of equipment here at this show. Definitely neat to see. And then like this conveyor here, this is my understanding if you're loading the big trucks. 
that one self-propelled unit I showed you. Looks like it can back up to this, dump the nuts or the pistachios, almonds into here, and then convey them into a truck. I might not be 100% right on how all that works. That's how it was explained to me. Of course, I never seen this equipment before, so they could have told me anything. And again, here's a couple more machines you just don't see every day. Let's walk over and check them out. Also, if you're watching this video and some of this equipment is stuff you guys run on your farm, feel free to comment below or send me an email. I would definitely be interested in coming out sometime and seeing this equipment, filming it, running it in the field for a future video. And let's go see what John Deere has on display here at the World Egg Expo. John Deere definitely had some machinery on display here at World Egg Expo we would not see at a Farm Progress or National Farm Machinery Show, so I'm glad I was able to see it and share it. Now here's quite the offset disc, 36 inch blades. I'd love to see what one of these would do here in Ohio on the farm. And let's go see what's going on over here at the egg code display. And let's have a walk through the Staley West display and look at the steamers. Staley West is a company out of Cedar City, Utah that builds these hay steamers. And what these are, these go between the tractor and the baler here. And they use these out west in the dry climate. So their window of opportunity to bale alfalfa hay usually happens at night when there's a little bit of dew on the hay. Just due to the dry climate, they don't want to lose those leaves. And what these do is give the farmer more options or more time, a bigger window of opportunity to get out there and bale that hay. This puts steam on the windrow or in the hay as it's going in the baler to save the leaves. And a quick walk through of the Laird Manufacturing booth here. These guys make mixer feeders and some manure handling equipment. And here's another manufacturer I'm not familiar with. Let's check out their stuff.
lots of orchard sprayers at this show as well. The current time is 9.30. See the California Rain Cow Horse Association work cattle in the Livestock Demonstration Pavilion starting at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. See all the action on the east side of the Farm Credit Dairy Center. Check out the new hauling equipment. I wonder if that's a farm YouTuber up there with the camera. And now it's time to check out the Case IH display. So it looks like they got some new model four-wheel drive tractors in the quad tracks and the articulated four-wheel drives. When I was at Louisville last week unloading tractors, there was a new quad track there that did not have any numbers on it. So I figured they were coming with something new. And here you go. They got a triple nickel now. And we'll walk over here to the quad track. Looks like they got some new model numbers that I'm going to show you right here. So the big one used to be their 620 and it looks like now is a 645 with a peak horsepower rating of 699 horsepower. So last week when I was unloading those tractors in Louisville and saw that quad track that did not have a model number on it, I'm guessing when I do get to Louisville in a couple days, I'll see it with one of these numbers. And here's another one of those tools that we do not see every day in the Midwest. Looks like it'd do quite the job though.
and we will now take a look around the Crone booth. As I said, some of the Crone company stores do sell Deutz Far tractors, so this worked out pretty good. They got some of our tractors on display with their equipment and vice versa back at our display. Now let's watch some autonomous tractors work in a vineyard. We're now going to head into the select track display and I am going to drive an electric tractor. Some vlogging here on the old electric tractor. Nice.
and now let's watch an autonomous orchard sprayer. Here's a look at the new Fent electric tractor. I don't know if this is out full production yet or if this is still a concept, but here you go. Oh yeah, and here is a layout of the show. And that's going to do it for my time at the show here. So we're going to drive back to Los Angeles and catch a plane in the morning. The next stop is going to be the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Tuesday night we made it back to LAX, stayed at a hotel right next to the airport. I had a 7 a.m. flight out on Wednesday morning, however there was a delay, we left at 8.30. Leaving late, I missed my connection flight since I was not able to get a direct flight back to Cincinnati, had to connect through Atlanta, missed that connection and was able to get on a later flight. Still made it to Cincinnati at a decent time, of course Atlanta to Cincinnati was a pretty short ride about an hour or so and here we are coming into the cincinnati airport which i said earlier is actually located in kentucky it's just across the river just south of cincinnati there and there is a look at the ohio river as we are coming in for the landing Grabbed my suitcase, headed out to my truck, and it was about an 80-mile drive from the Cincinnati airport down here to Louisville, Kentucky. We are staying downtown, so here I am rolling into downtown Louisville, Kentucky to a hotel I've never stayed at before, the Moxie, which is right downtown next to the Yum Center. It was a pretty neat place. Anyways, going to take in the last three days of the show, but we're going to start off by going to the Cracker Barrel like I usually do right before you get into the showgrounds here. Here we are, rolling in for the second day of the National Farm Machinery Show, or my first day. And before I head into the show, looks like all the tractor pullers are here. Not sure that I'm going to go to the tractor pull, but here's a look at all their rigs. As I said earlier, these two farm shows generally run the same week. The World Egg Expo runs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this year. That would have been February 14th, 15th, and 16th. Then the National Farm Machinery Show here in Louisville, Kentucky. That is generally a Wednesday through Saturday show, so four days. And this year it would have been the 15th through the 18th. And there's going to be a lot of farm YouTubers here at this show. I guess the only thing I bring a little different to the table is in my videos of farm shows, I get to show some of the setup and so forth. And then this year, got to go to World Ag Expo and include that. Okay, I made it from California to Louisville, Kentucky. Let's head into the National Farm Machinery Show. And let's walk around and check out some of the machinery that is here at the 2023 National Farm Machinery Show.
increase both reliability and performance. And, and do that to try to make your whole harvest experience as enjoyable as possible. Because family time at harvest is important. Go later. Because it's obvious. Last summer, I bought this exact same model set up just like this with the belly mower and the loader, which reminds me, one of these days, I need to do a YouTube video of that tractor. And wandering around the show, I ran into some other influencers such as Farm Fit Mama, ran into Egg with Emma. I met her last year. She's working with the guys for Farm for Profit podcast. They did get me on a podcast here at the show. That one will be coming up in the future, so looking forward to listening to that. Today on the Farm for Fun show from the National Farm Machinery Show with Sucret Manufacturing, we meet up with another social media star. He's got fantastic content across all and over 126,000 subscribers on YouTube. Please welcome from Ohio, Mr. Mike Glass, a.k.a. Farmhand Mike. Oh, wow. Thanks. Thanks for and on the last day of the show, I had some visitors, my wife and daughter come down, and so did my oldest son, Michael, and daughter-in-law, Abby. So it's always good to have family visitors here at the show. And as you can see, it was a pretty nice day here on the last day of the show. Almost too nice to be inside. But we did have a couple tractors parked outside here, so I thought I'd include those in the video. And just like that, the show was over and it was time to tear down. We got all our stuff moved out Saturday night, as did a lot of the other companies. Come back the next day, everything got loaded out. A lot of the tractors from the show went to a dealer, some went back to the warehouse, and so on. And that's going to do it for the video of the 2023 World Egg Expo and National Farm Machinery Show.
If you did like this video, please go down there and hit that like button. Feel free to comment below. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it if you would go down there and hit subscribe. And a big thank you to all the people that watch me here on YouTube, follow me on other social media platforms that stop by the Deutz Far Display to say hi and talk a little bit, get your picture taken with me. I really appreciate that. Always look forward to that. Sometimes it gets kind of busy, and I know some of you have to wait. But anyways, it's always a good time meeting my fans. Anyways, thank you, and we'll see you on the next video.